Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I've got a treat for you today. Okay, we've just had this dungeon uh, tournament drop for Dragon. Dragon tournament in the next two days. Can you beat the Dragon using only champions from the Lizardman faction? And they've got quite a juicy reward here. An epic tome and a void shard. Uh, which I'm up for, by the way. I really want to... Oh, I am going to pull my void shards to try and get uh, Taras. Yeah, so uh, this is only really a time to pull your voids if you're either in that YOLO mentality or if you're looking for specific champions. But uh, I am looking for Taras. So for me, that is big on the main account. Now, Lizardman only, you might be like, damn, that sounds hard. There's actually a couple of like easy win champions in this faction that can do this really well. So I'm going to call out kind of like who to look out for generally. But then I'm going to show you a solo build from an epic champion which works in three areas of the game, potentially four even. But yeah, three areas that I can show you today. So good champions to look out for if you're trying to do this mission. Broadmoor keeps things moving and has got a revive. Yeah, so he is someone who's a fusible epic. Pretty damn useful. Uh, somebody like a Aox is so damn good. Poisons, which is great for dragon. Heals for your team um, and an AoE decrease attack also got the ability to ramp up poisons as well so uh, definitely going to be useful in any team you do i actually really really rate this epic a lot um Scathix has got a cleanse so if you need that kind of cleanse ability for the actual dragon or for the waves he's also got a, a kind of ability to steal the buffs from your enemies in the waves. so you know got apothecaries and that to, to steal buffs off um really decent champion the decreased speed won't work against dragon but decent champion generally the champion we're going to highlight is Venomage. This champion is really strong for an epic. And we're going to show you a build today. Because she's got such base, uh, good base stats here. High defense, high HP, decent speed. And she brings a load of poison. Actually just such a good champion for this fight. So I'm going to show you a build that's going to do it. If you've got Shador, or there's a bunch of legendaries here which will help. Shador is damn good. Poisons, control, does it solo if you want him to. Um... I guess Chris is just nuts anyway. Draco, loads of damage. AoE, decreased defense and weaken and some poison. Really strong in this dungeon. Uh, Fushan, insane damage plus AoE, decreased defense. Really strong in this dungeon. Uh, Razin, turn me to drop the waves and has got an okay kind of setup for this dungeon. But yeah, I think they're the main ones. Let's show you what Venomage can do here. Now, obviously, I've got a big account, right? I I try with these videos to find a way to get to a point where it's like, this is like what you need to achieve. You don't need to have my gear to do it, but you do need to achieve something. I dropped the banner out so you can kind of try and get a bit closer to what I'm doing here. But honestly, you do need reasonable stats. It's a solo build. So we've got regen set. That's important. Regen set is going to heal you by 15% of your HP every turn. If you go regen plus uh, immortal, you get an even bigger heal every turn, but absolutely have to have a heal coming every turn. Uh, we need a good amount of speed here. I've got 236 in this build and it's worked fine. High health, good defense, good speed. Accuracy for me is actually over the top from what we need. We need about 180, 180 accuracy. And then you want a, at least 250 resistance. So there's a few stats you need to be hitting here. HP, defense, speed. Resistance, accuracy. The accuracy number can come down a bit. The resistance number can come down a bit as well. The way I'm getting there is through HP chest and gloves. Uh, speed on the boots. We're looking for those other stats in substats. And then I've basically got reasonable rolls in resistance and accuracy elsewhere. Uh, I've got HP on the ring with defense percent rolled. Uh, and I've got defense on the banner with good substats of resistance and accuracy. Uh, and in terms of masteries here... Quite different to what you might normally see. So this is a full support build to stay alive whilst poison does all the damage. Okay, so we've got things like I've got a bit more resistance in here. I've got a bit more healing from the, the healing sets. I think this works. I could be wrong, honestly. I think this does work. Uh, heal when we kill someone. Important for the waves. Delay death is just reduced damage. Retribution, a chance to hit back and get your A1s off. Support tree, we've got more health. We've got, you might take more accuracy if you're short on accuracy here. Uh, I've got 
Arcane Celerity gives me more speed as my debuffs are popping off. Uh, we've got Laura Steel for more speed as well. I do put Master Hexer on there to, for a chance for the poisons to land for longer. This is an important one. Spirit Haste, more speed as people die. Okay, and then I've got Oppressor here, which gives me a turn meter feel as, uh, for each debuff that I've got active. Okay, so we're, we're kind of gaining more speed again, really. You could go Offense and take Whirlwind of Death for more speed and end in Warmaster. I found that this build has got more survivability. So I've got a tip for you here. Dragon 20 is going to get some good points here. But Dragon 19, and plus you get 5 or 6 star gear, whereas you only get 4 to 6 on 19. Dragon 19, though, is green affinity spirit, where Venomage is the strong affinity. So if you can't quite get the stats that I'm talking about here, you can actually drop down to the spirit level, and you'll find that 10 times easier because you, you basically got a better chance to land your abilities you've got worse chance of you being crit and all that type of stuff also make sure you bring lizardman food if you're going to do this because you you don't want to put a load of work in get this run going and then not do the actual tournament we're trying to do so you've got four lizardman food champions in the mix the food will die straight away that gets us our extra speed from spirit haste and then we've got venom age by herself doing all the work the first wave is actually kind of comfortable. Yeah, I've, I've never come remotely close to dying on the first wave. The second wave, though, is a bit naughty and it's got some big hitters in it. So uh, that's why we had to go with this kind of like pretty high stat build. You can see here it's a bit of a rinse and repeat. We throw our poisons out. We heal in between. It feels a little bit dangerous right up until the point that the first enemy mob dies. Once they die and we're down to four enemies, it's very comfortable. But for the five being alive, it just feels a little bit cheeky, a little bit like we're in trouble. But um, so far, so good. With, this, with these stats, um, so far, so good in terms of runs. On to wave two. So yeah, these two, uh, what are these guys called at the end? The Relic Keeper copies. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, these guys can crit you and they, can, they hit hard when they do. So that's the only kind of danger you've got. Um, and when I had, there you go, look at that 30k crit. This is, so this is a, a really bad RNG run that you're seeing right now. This is about as bad as it gets. And yeah, if you can't get to these type of stats, then as I say, drop down to level 19 and it will be way more comfortable. Um, but yeah, you won't get as good a gear drops. But it'll be the same thing here. As soon as we kill someone, bam, we kill someone and it's like that. Oh, that feels better. Yeah, we take them down. Very easy. The dragon part of the fight is actually very easy. Yeah, the resistance allows us to resist all of the, the kind of, or well, most of the, the debuffs here. There is a 3% chance they'll still go on. We cannot resist the stun, but even if he does stun, we're fast enough to get another turn in and be fine. The decreased attack here massively reduces the damage that we take. So the dragon part of the fight really is not the problem. It's wave two. That's the only issue with this fight. But you can see here, this is going to be a comfortable like two minute, 20, two and a half minutes, whatever, run. And, you know, we do this for the afternoon and we're going to get ourselves that void shard and get ourselves through the tournament. But I figured whilst I'm doing this and showing you this build, I may as well show you this in action against some other fights because, you know, there's two other fights really where I feel it really impactful. And another one which I'm not going to show you today because it's not on rotation, but if you put the same build with a blood shield accessory then you could actually solo all of the normal doom tower uh for scarab boss i don't know if it would do hard i don't think it would do hard but for normal yes so let's run ice golem then ice golem 20 is already the uh affinity that we want make sure we bring in the lizards uh, in fact it doesn't matter for this for this it doesn't matter you just bring in food but i'm just showing you other runs that can be done to make sure they're food champions in here. The first wave's a bit slow, honestly, because of these this front guard. These two uh, lasses here, they cleanse off your debuffs and that makes them slower to kill because they put a block debuffs up as well. It's annoying. Um, the others are, will go down quick and then you've got to wait until that falls off so that you can... There, yeah, look at this. So annoying. Um, yeah, so they're going to take us a little while to kill, but there's no risk here. There's zero risk. They're going to whack us onto the next wave. So here we go, on to wave two. Now we do have some nasty little fellas at the front line. 
They don't do some big damage with their Shriek. Um, good thing about this build is though, we're not hitting hard. So we're not in risk of dying from this kind of, uh, what's this, the reflect damage. We're just doing damage through poison. So again, there's no risk here. There's no risk on wave two. And it's just a case of uh, slow and steady kills the does the race. You know, we're on like two minutes 20 already. Waves are way worse than the boss for this part. So if you wanted to bring in a duo, you could bring in a second champion that does something like HP burn or just straight up nukes and it would speed up the wave element. But uh, again, we've got no risk. Let's go to the boss. So on the boss, this is kind of where you want the resistance. In fact, in fact, so far I've not resisted anything. Maybe I'm too low on resistance. There's one. Wow. That's, uh, that's the first time I've seen all these things land back to back like that. So yeah, my resistance must be too low right now, uh, which I didn't think it was. But I so far have not failed. Having the decreased healing is a nightmare, honestly, because I can't heal. Not healing in between. And he's, he's landing it way more often than I thought he would. So yeah, perhaps we need a bit more resistance for this particular fight. I still feel like I'm comfortable because as soon as these side ads go down, I've got no risk at all. Now this, this boss will just basically be taking chunks of poison. We've got decreased attack anyway from Venomage, which is the main thing you need for this boss. Poisons is the best way to do damage against this boss. But even if he picks up the side ads, I'm not really in any problem. Sometimes you could get through this without any side ads coming back up at all. But it looks like I probably need another 15 or 20 resistance compared to what I've got to get the job done more comfortably yeah so again i'm showing you i guess i'm showing you in real time but uh i'm showing you like a the riskiest version this is going to be because you know we're, we're really under no pressure here it's about a four and a half minute run it's not the quickest run in the world but ice golem a lot of people struggle to get consistency on and that's what this will give you consistency so bam there you go that is going to be that so the third area which i'm going to show you is just cheeky old Minotaur. What you want on Minotaur is one champion that can do the do and one champion that's getting their masteries until the point where it's like, well, you know what? I'll just bring in a bigger squad. Yeah, so once you've got a bigger squad that's going to kill stuff, fine. But Venomage, again, same build, same setup. So it's one effort of a build to get yourself into this place where um, we can just go ahead and do three things, potentially four things, with one build, which is pretty nuts. Again, we've got no, there's no risk. There's no risk in this at all. The waves generally are pretty comfortable in Minotaur uh, once you start to get yourself some decent stats. And, you know, people ask me, why don't you do more guides around Minotaur? It's really because once you've got yourself a few 60s with masteries, it's so easy. Yeah, but there's no, there's no risk here. I guess onto the boss. I mean, honestly, there's no risk here either. <laughs> there's, like, this is an easy fight. Better majors like that easy uh so she's going to take this down and in quite a quick time really it's going to end up being something close to about two minutes i think to to clear this dungeon side ads don't do enough damage to worry us especially when we get this decrease attack on them the main boss doesn't really do enough damage either worry us um even when he's got his kind of big boy uh stats up it's like that whatever we can deal with it look it's like are you hitting us do you even know how to hit I guess it would be wrong if I didn't show you the team I'm actually going to use here to farm this up. The same Venomage in the mix, but we're bringing in a couple of Dracos and a Fushan. Going to drop defense. We can bring the Fushan slam in, and then we're just going to basically be applying poisons all over the place. Fushan's going to be wrecking the house, and Dracos do a lot of damage when they choose to. Get a decreased defense out with the other one. Fushan decides to stun up a bunch of the wave. Double slay. From the Draco. Um, don't die, Draco. Don't die. You're on you're on film. You're on camera. Onto the boss. And then basically we've got poison for days. And the cool thing is, if anything went wrong, you know, because we've gone too bullish on the damage, then Venomage can solo it. We know that anyway. But uh this is gonna be a decent enough time. And I'm gonna get this job done as quickly as I can. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, good luck if you're going to try and pull off the Venomage build. I think it's quite stat intensive, but worth it for a few areas of the game. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.